it's because we all sat and waited for somebody else to do it. We're going to have to work together on this. And at the meeting at the Lucerne School a couple of months ago, there were two ladies sitting there that didn't live here. They were from um, Upper Lake and Blue Lakes, I believe. They were advised two years ago by a realtor not to buy in Lucerne because of the horrific water rates and the cost of living here and the fact that people were already uh, closing businesses and selling their homes. So we've let this sit long enough and we need cooperation from everybody here and everybody you can talk to because if we don't all work together, we won't accomplish what Dr. Bell is working so hard for. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> in the work right now, being slow, it's about doing an imminent domain. Right, that's the third option I talked about. So that would be, um, that's the only way the county could take it over if Cal Water didn't want to sell it. If Cal Water did want to sell it, then either would an eminent domain be required if they did want to sell it? No, no in fact, uh, the CPUC uh, tends to look quite favorably on public entities taking over from private water companies who've just had enough or are failing for one reason or another. So if they were agreeable, it would right. be a much different situation. And again, that's going to require the Board of Supervisors agree that it's a good idea. I can tell you special districts <laughs> runs all, I mean, special districts is not the most beloved department either because they issue bills and you pay water bills to them. Um, however, they run an efficient shop. They're doing, they're running many water systems out of one office and they're local and they know how to run a local water system this late, right? So they, they know how to do it and our bills as a county the system that special districts manages are much lower. They're about half what the bills are in Lucerne. They're going to go up. I mean, we do have we have costs as this Cal Water system per regulation, so and also the lake condition obviously is affecting <coughs> what it takes to treat the water. But our the bills of the people that are you know the, the plant the plants weren't expen as expensive as one Cal Water. That's the bottom line. Their plant was just way too expensive. The other thing is, and um, I'm going to speak a little bit out of turn here, the county council will correct me if I'm wrong, but the plant that was purchased by, by Cal Water, they got a public loan for that. Now, as a private company, they're not able to advocate for forgiveness of that loan, even on behalf of the residents of this room. They can't really do that, whereas government could. So uh, if it were a government-run system, we could ask for forgiveness for some of that loan, and that would, that might be an avenue, and that's what got me to thinking about the idea. But eminent domain is a tool. It's not the answer. It's a tool, and it would be a tool only under the circumstance where Cal Water absolutely said, it's not for sale, we're going to fight you. Right? That, that would be when you use that tool, and you'd have to come up with the legal way to fight as well. Sure. There are grants available. I can, I can say that there's not, at this moment, the grants are kind of in short supply, but with this infrastructure fund that Governor Brown has planned, there may be more grants available. And again, I, I doubt that Cal Water would qualify for many of those, if any. Okay. Other questions, sir? Uh, let's see if anybody else. You know, that's a good legal question. I'm glad our lawyer came. Um, it's kind of a stretch, I would say. Let me try to answer it. You'll tell, I'll say if I'm wrong. Um, it's a legal stretch to say that health problems are caused by people not taking showers. I mean, to, to say that we would take over the system because they 